Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Dr. Shubha, Professor of Anatomy from Kempegoda Institute of Medical Sciences, Bangalore. Today I am going to talk about the anatomy of sciatic nerve. Once a patient came to a doctor telling the following complaints. The patient initially had pain in the lower back which later descended down to his back of the thigh on the right side and now he is worried because he cannot feel any sensation in the foot. He was worried that he was having multiple neurological disorders. Doctor on conducting the examination told the patient not to worry. He told all these symptoms are related to one single nerve and the condition he was talking about was sciatica. Let us look at what this condition is and which is this nerve which can result in this condition. So today we will be talking about sciatic nerve and we will follow these headings. First of all the introduction, then the origin, the components and their root value, course and relations of the nerve, termination of the nerve, the branches supplying various structures, topography or surface marking applied anatomy and will end with summary. Sciatic nerve is one of the widest nerves in the body. It is about 2 centimeters in width. It takes its origin from the sacral plexus which is situated within the pelvis. It has two components forming the sciatic nerve one is called as the tibial component and the other one is called as common peroneal component. The tibial component of sciatic nerve has the fibers arising from the ventral branches of ventral rami of L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 where the L stands for lumbar spinal segments and the S stands for sacral spinal segments. So tibial component made up of fibers from L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. The other component is the common peroneal component. The fibers of this are formed from dorsal branches of ventral rami of L4, L5, S1 and S2. So you find sciatic nerve which is formed by tibial and common peroneal components has a root value of L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3. Now let us look at the course and relations of sciatic nerve. I told you already sacral plexus is within the pelvis and this is a branch of sacral plexus. It is almost the terminal branch of sacral plexus. So as it emerges it is deep to the pelvic fascia superficial to the pyriformis. So it comes out of the pelvis through the greater sciatic notch which has the pyriformis coming out of it. So it descends below the pyriformis. So it is going to leave the pelvis and enter the gluteal region by passing through the greater sciatic notch below pyriformis. Here it will be lying between the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve of thigh and the nerve to quadratus femoris. Medial to sciatic nerve is the inferior gluteal vessels and nerves. It is covered superficially by gluteus maximus which is the muscle lying deep to the deep fascia in the gluteal region. As it emerges below pyriformis it will descend down to reach the thigh. Deep to this will be the ischial surface 
that is the body of the ischium. Next to this you will find the obturator internus and the two gemelli. Inferior to this it is lying on the quadratus femoris and this quadratus femoris muscle will separate the sciatic nerve from the hip joint and obturator externus tendon. Next it will descend superficial to the adductor magnus and it enters the thigh. In the back of the thigh it is crossed superficially by long head of biceps femoris which is taking its origin from the ischial tuberosity. So, you find this long head crossing the sciatic nerve and going laterally. Here it will unite with the short head to form the belly of biceps femoris. When it descends down sciatic nerve will lie superficial to a muscle which is in the deepest part of the compartment and that is the adductor magnus. It descends down in the middle of the thigh to reach the popliteal fossa. In the gluteal region and the upper part of the thigh it is accompanied by an artery which is called as arteria committans nervi ischiadesi and this artery is a branch coming from the inferior gluteal artery. It is the accompanying artery of sciatic nerve supplying sciatic nerve. This is a remnant of axis artery of the lower limb. If this is enlarged then we will have to rule out a narrow femoral artery. This can take part in anastomosis too otherwise it just ends by supplying the sciatic nerve. Now let us look at the termination of the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve once it reaches the popliteal fossa it divides into its two components at the upper angle of the popliteal fossa. So, this is where it is going to terminate at the upper angle of the popliteal fossa you find the termination of the sciatic nerve into tibial nerve which continues down in the middle of the popliteal fossa and the common peroneal nerve which will descend down along the lateral border of the popliteal fossa. So, normally sciatic nerve terminates at the upper angle of the popliteal fossa which is at the junction of the middle and the lower one third of the thigh. Sometimes sciatic nerve can terminate at a higher level it can be as high as within the pelvis then you find the two components will be emerging separately. Then you find the common peroneal component pierces pyriformis and emerges out whereas the tibial component comes out of the greater sciatic notch below the pyriformis. This is in case of high termination of sciatic nerve. Now let us look at the branches given off by the sciatic nerve. Usually it gives muscular and articular branches. It gives an articular branch to the hip joint posterior surface of the capsule of the hip joint is supplied by this branch. Otherwise it gives muscular branches to the muscles which are present in the back of thigh. This group of muscles is called as hamstring muscles and this is formed by the four muscles that is semitendinosus, semimembranosus, adductor magnus ischial part and the long head of biceps femoris. Along with these you find sciatic nerve also supplying the short head which is the non hamstring part. The branches which arise from the tibial component supplying all the hamstring muscles mentioned they arise from the medial side of the sciatic nerve. So, please note these branches carry fibers from tibial component they are going to supply the hamstring muscles they arise from the medial side of the sciatic nerve. So, there are four branches given off to the four components forming the hamstring group of muscles. Only one branch arises from the lateral side which is going to supply the short head of biceps femoris and this will carry from fibers from the common peroneal component. 
So, only one branch is coming from the lateral side, whereas all the other muscular branches are arising from the medial side. So, it is said to be the lateral side of the nerve is the safer side when compared to the medial side because maximum number of branches are arising from its medial side and the lateral side giving off only one branch is relatively safe when you need to approach this. Now, let us look at the surface marking of the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve can be marked by three points. The first point can be marked as the midpoint between posterior superior iliac spine and the ischial tuberosity. So, a line connecting these two with a midpoint of this line will be the first point for marking sciatic nerve. The next point is marked by marking a line which connects the ischial tuberosity with the tip or the apex of the greater trochanter. Midpoint of this line will mark the second point in the surface marking of sciatic nerve. Third point is in the midline of the thigh at the junction of upper two third and the lower one third. This will mark the third point which corresponds to the superior angle of the popliteal fossa. All these three points will be connected by a curved line which will indicate the sciatic nerve, the convexity of the line should face superolaterally. So, that is the surface marking of sciatic nerve. Now, let us look at the clinical anatomy related to sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve as it descends in the thigh, when it is lying between quadratus femoris and the adductor magnus, it is in relation to the posterior surface of the femur. In this region, if it gets compressed against a hard surface like a wooden chair, then it results in numbness along the distribution of sciatic nerve and its terminal branches. This is called as sleeping foot. Note, the area where it gets compressed is as it lies between quadratus femoris and the adductor magnus. It gets compressed against the bone lying there and that is the femur. If the person gets up and hits the foot to the ground a few times, all the sensations will revert back. So, it is just a temporary condition, sleeping foot. When giving intramuscular injections, in the gluteal region, most important thing is to safeguard the sciatic nerve. The most safe area where an injection can be given intramuscularly in the gluteal region involves this green colored area and that is the upper lateral quadrant of the gluteal region. The muscle which will be used here is gluteus medius. Because sciatic nerve which is curving downwards and laterally and descending down will lie in relation to the inferomedial and lateral quadrant, you are avoiding these quadrants and you will be using this superolateral quadrant which is much safer to give an intramuscular injection. The muscle which will be used for the injection is gluteus medius lying deep to gluteal aponeurosis. Initial part of the lecture, we spoke about sciatica, the doctor diagnosing the condition as sciatica. What is this sciatica? Sciatica is compression of the sciatic nerve roots in the lumbar region or the sacral region as they are emerging from the vertebral column. One condition resulting in this can be disc prolapse disc prolapse in the lower lumbar region can compress the lower nerve roots and these fibers if they are contributing to sciatic nerve then they will be inflamed. So, there is pain in the back and the pain radiates to the back of thigh along the course of sciatic nerve and along the distribution of sciatic nerve in the leg. So, a person will have pain in the back radiating to the back of thigh and continuing on to the leg and the dorsum of the foot. This is called as sciatica.
compression of sciatic nerve rootlets. This can be diagnosed by using a test which is called as straight leg raising test. The patient is made to lie on the bed. The doctor will keep the extended leg both at the hip and the knee joint. Will, he'll hold it and he'll with the help of the ankle and he'll try to lift this extended leg upwards slowly. This will stretch the sciatic nerve which is present on the posterior aspect and if there is sciatica, a person will have severe pain along the course of sciatic nerve due to its stretching during this slow, straight leg raising test. Then the SLRT it becomes positive, that is a straight leg raising test for sciatica. Sciatic nerve block can be done using an anesthetic agent. If you want to do any minor surgeries in the lower limb and the area which is supplied by sciatic nerve can be anesthetized. For doing the sciatic nerve block, you need to inject an anesthetic fluid into the sciatic nerve area. So, how do you identify this area? You need to connect the posterior superior iliac spine and the apex of the greater trochanter and put a midpoint on this line and go slightly inferomedial to this point and this is the point where you need to give the anesthetic fluid injection. So, that will result in anesthesia of the lower limb especially below the knee. Next condition is pyriformis syndrome. It is an entrapment neuropathy. You find sciatic nerve as it emerges out of the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic notch lies usually below pyriformis. And if this pyriformis muscle is enlarged as seen in case of athletes, especially in lady athletes, it can compress the sciatic nerve as it comes out resulting in pyriformis syndrome and the patient will have pain in the buttock area. Penetrating wounds on the back can also injure sciatic nerve, especially in the area where sciatic nerve is got a subfacial course that is between the gluteus maximus and the long head of biceps femoris. Between these two superficial muscles, sciatic nerve has got a subfacial course. So, any penetrating wounds in this area can easily injure sciatic nerve. Lastly, posterior dislocation of the hip joint. You find the hip joint with the obturator externus deep to the quadratus femoris is a posterior relation of the sciatic nerve. So, if this hip joint dislocates posteriorly, it will be stretching the sciatic nerve resulting in injury to sciatic nerve. Any injury to sciatic nerve will or its terminal branches that is the common peroneal nerve can result in a condition called as foot drop. As you can see, the right foot is plantar flexed. So, a person when he has lifted the foot off the ground, it will be plantar flexed hanging down whereas, the left foot is normal. So, foot drop is a condition you find in injury to the deep peroneal nerve or the sciatic nerve. Deep peroneal nerve is going to supply the muscles of the anterior compartment which act as dorsiflexors. So, if there is no dorsiflexion, it results in foot drop. Coming to the summary of sciatic nerve, we looked at sciatic nerve origin and it is a branch of sacral plexus, it is a terminal branch coming out through the greater sciatic notch below the pyriformis. It supplies the hip joint and the hamstring group of muscles which are present on the back of the thigh, terminates at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa. It supplies all muscles below knee and so, if there is an injury to the sciatic nerve, all the muscles below knee will be paralyzed. It supplies most of the skin of the leg and foot through its terminal branches except for a small area along the medial side of the leg and the foot up to the ball of the great toe 
supplied by the saphenous nerve which is a branch coming from the femoral nerve. So, whole of the leg and the foot except for this medial area is has loss of sensation or has anesthesia. Sciatica is a condition caused by compression of sciatic nerve root fibers resulting in pain radiating from the back of thigh to the lower part of the leg along the course of deep peroneal nerve. There can be associated symptoms like loss of sensation if it becomes a chronic condition. Intramuscular injection should be given in the upper lateral quadrant otherwise it can cause injury to sciatic nerve. Injury to sciatic nerve one of the commonest causes is iatrogenic that is the induced injury by the paramedical or the medical staff and this is usually due to intramuscular injection wrongly placed on the maximum convex surface of the gluteal region. That should never be done, it should be given to the outer upper quadrant of the gluteal region. So, upper lateral quadrant is the preferred site where we will be injecting into the gluteus medius. So, these are the points which should be kept in mind for sciatic nerve. Thank you.